What's good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your Friday Night Smackdown full show review and results for you guys. You guys already know how these videos work. We're going to run through the entire Friday Night Smackdown, letting you guys know exactly what took place on the show, what I think about it, give you all my personal thoughts and opinions on everything moving forward, the feuds, the matches we got, the segments. I'm going to give you all of the feedback and tell you exactly what happened so you guys will know for yourselves. And I'm going to give you my own, you know, thoughts and reactions on the show, what I thought of it. Was it shitty? Was it great? Was it somewhere in between? We're going to find out here together. If there's anything interesting or worth noting, I will definitely point it out. So that being said, guys, let's dive into Friday Night Smackdown and find out what the hell took place. So the show pretty much started out all about the Intercontinental Champion AJ Styles. We come out there, the show opens up, and everybody's out at the ring. It looked like a freaking lumberjack match. Renee Young was in the ring. The Intercontinental Championship was on the ring in this little pedestal. She pretty much gets on the mic and just hypes up AJ Styles because he won the Intercontinental Championship last week over Daniel Bryan. AJ Styles comes out and you pretty much you know he, he's digging into the roster and he, he gets Daniel Bryan in the ring he calls him out and he calls Daniel Bryan out to put the championship around his way so he wants Daniel Bryan to put the championship on AJ Styles and he pretty much says you know you're going to tell me congratulations and if you don't do this you are a coward. Daniel Bryan actually does it he actually takes the championship wraps it around AJ Styles waist tells him congratulations and then he cuts off AJ and cuts a passionate promo talking about defending the title against different guys he said you should be a fighting champion, you should fight Big E, and you should fight Grand Metalik, and you should put on these great matches as champion. AJ cuts him off and says he'll defend it where he wants, when he wants, and he basically said that Daniel Bryan is at the end of the line because he did lose, and he says, as far as I'm concerned, you're getting at the back of the line. Daniel Bryan says he agrees with that, and he makes a case for Drew Gulak to get a title shot since AJ Styles was pinned by Drew Gulak on SmackDown a few weeks back. AJ says, no handouts for this, you gotta be the number one contender to get a shot at this championship, and out of nowhere bro Matt Riddle has hit the ring, guys. Matt Riddle comes out on stage. Big entrance there. Now, I know already what a lot of people are going to be saying. I know that he was accused of sexual assault. And there's a bunch of allegations going around right now from a specific individual on Matt Riddle. But I will say this, just like I said about the Enzo Amore case, I want to wait until we know the full story. I want to wait until there's a full-fledged investigation against Matt Riddle. And I'm not going to crucify this man for something I don't know that he did for sure. Sexual assault is a very strong allegation. And just like Enzo Amore, I'm not going to to throw this man under the bus. Matt Riddle has made a return statement on it and we're just going to wait till we get the facts and we get an investigation on the matter. And that's really all I can say about the matter at this moment until we know more about the case and everything moving forward. I will say I think this show was pre-recorded so I don't think that the allegations were known about at the time of recording this or I don't think WWE would have put it out. But on this night, Matt Riddle comes out and we pretty much have a one-on-one -on -one match between Matt Riddle and AJ Styles. So these guys are going head-to-head -head and we come back from commercial and the, uh, his name, Greg Hamilton, gets on the mic and he says, this is for the Intercontinental Championship. And AJ Styles is like, whoa, bro. He, he has his own moment. He's like, no, the hell it ain't. AJ Styles said, no shoes, no shirt, no title opportunities. I thought that was a hilarious line right there. But we do have a one-on-one -on -one match. No Intercontinental title on the line, but Matt Riddle and AJ Styles put on a good match right here. Very hard-hitting. You guys know the style of Matt Riddle. At one point in the match, Matt Riddle does go to the outside and he gets in a little face-to-face -face with Trash Corbin. So you know that's where their first feuds going, right? I'm sure next week we'll get a Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles Intercontinental Championship match, and Trash Corbin will cost Matt Riddle, or something like that. Or Matt Riddle may not be on TV until all of this is actually settled, with all of the stuff going on around him. We'll just have to see about that, and see how WWE plays their cards. But WWE did release Jack Gallagher of this evening, and did not wish him well on future endeavors, so I'm guessing they found some pretty substantial evidence against him. But anyways, Matt Riddle defeats AJ Styles in a great matchup. He intercepts the phenomenal forearm, slams the man down, and one, two, three, Matt Riddle wins the match in his debut against AJ Styles. Everyone gets in the ring, huge celebration, hugs Matt Riddle, lifts him up on the shoulders, everybody's freaking hugging, and big-ass celebration for Matt Riddle. I enjoyed this segment, I love that we got the debut of Matt Riddle, I thought it was a great match, just a great opening to SmackDown here on this night for Friday Night SmackDown. After this, we cut backstage and we have an interview promo with Jeff Hardy. You know, he's just talking about his rivalry with Sheamus. He's talking about everything that's going on with Sheamus. He talks about his past and his demons and his alcoholism. And he even admits to himself being an alcoholic and pretty much has a baby face response to Sheamus. Thought this was pretty good by Jeff Hardy. Good mic work and everything like that. After this, we cut backstage to another interview with Shorty G. And up behind him, Mojo Raleigh starts creeping up behind him. And then Shorty G is in the interview and he pretty 
much says, I have eyes in the back of my head, slaps Mojo Rawley, and we go to commercial. When we come back from commercial, we have a one-on-one -on -one match between Shorty G and Mojo Rawley. I'm going to call him Chad Gable because it's Chad Gable. It's not Shorty G. But Chad Gable does win in a pretty much meaningless matchup. I guess they're trying to build up Chad Gable once again. I would love to see him challenge AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Championship, and I think those two would put on banger matches. But imagine like Chad Gable versus Matt Riddle. There's a beautiful football game right there. Plenty of matchups for Chad Gable to get. I just hope this man gets somewhat of a push, man. He can do it, man. Let him go. After this, we have Miz TV with Mandy Rose. But before that, Miz and Morrison are in the ring bitching about the rules of their Blue Universal title match with Braun Strowman at Backlash. They pretty much cut him down, and they say, you know, moments before we went out for the match, we were told that whoever pinned Braun Strowman was going to be the Blue Universal champion, and that's not how it works in real sports. And they actually had some comedic stuff going on. There was some pretty good delivery here. They joked about Otis. Miz said, let's address the elephant in the room, and Morrison said, Otis. I thought that was kind of hilarious. But out comes Mandy as the guest, and they're just trying to, you know, talk about everything that's going on with Otis and everything involved with him and Mandy Rose. And then out of nowhere, I did not expect this to take place. I feel like this storyline was put on hold, but we got Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville comes out, and she does a fantastic job, man. She's in her pantsuit. She looks great. She looks super hot fire. She had on a suit, all black suit. She looked like total business. Ponytail, hair up, looking like a boss, you know. They, they go back and forth. Mandy and Sonya were cutting great. Great promos on each other. I thought this was an excellent segment, and I even tweeted about it. Sonya Deville is more natural on the mic than Bailey and Charlotte and some other women on the main roster. She did fantastic in this, and I hope that, you know, we get a great feud out of these two, and I want to see Sonya Deville on the mic more. She did a fantastic job here. I love this segment. I thought it was really good stuff. They go back and forth on jealousy and trying to ruin each other's careers, and talking about how Sonya tried to ruin Mandy's career and her image with the stuff with Dolph and Otis, and they go back and forth, and pretty much they tee off on each other. Sonya slaps Mandy. They get into a brawl. They roll to the outside, and that was the end of the Miz TV. I thought this was great. You know, I'm not big on Miz and Morrison together in this comedic stuff. They are sometimes pretty good when they get the delivery right, but the, the money in this was Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Specifically, Sonya Deville, she was on fire in this segment, but that was Miz TV with some good work by Sonya. Can't wait to see what she can get back in the ring. After that, we would recap Sasha and Bayley, what they did at Backlash to retain the women's championships, and then they would both come down to commentary, and we would get a New Day versus Lucha House Party matchup. Totally random match, but it was a decent match. You know, nothing too over the top, but Vegas guys did put on some good back and forth. New Day would win this matchup over the Lucha House Party, but after the matchup... Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura come out, and they beat the hell out of the New Day. Lucha House Party lost. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura would pretty much beat down New Day and Cesaro and Shinsuke would pretty much get on commentary in the commentators faces and say they are sick of being put on the back burner and they are here and they attack New Day. So I guess we're going to get this feud moving forward. I know we had a little bit of it. I know that Cesaro and Shinsuke pinned the New Day. So here they are probably first in line to get a tag team opportunity. After this, we would cut backstage where Dana Brooke, Tamina, Naomi, Lacey Evans, and Alexa Bliss were all backstage talking to each other, saying they're all disrespected by Sasha and Bayley. And then out of nowhere, Alexa Bliss says that Nikki Cross is missing and goes looking for her. We cut to a commercial. We cut back. We have an interview with Sheamus, and he's talking more about Jeff Hardy. You guys already know what I'm talking about. We cut to the ring where Nikki Cross appears at ringside and attacks Sasha and Bayley. So I guess Sasha and Bayley just chilled at ringside on commentary for a year and a half, waiting on Nikki Cross to come beat the hell out of them. But that's what she does, you know? She beats the hell out of both of them without Alexa Bliss, makes the tag champs look weak here, just a beating the hell out of both of them here. Crazy Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross gets up and challenges Sasha to a match. I did not care about this match simply because I am sick of these teams feuding. I want to see some new faces. I want to see some new places for all these people. And showing all these women here in the heels and just the women's division in general, it just shows how shallow it is for talent. Like, we need some new faces around here. But Sasha does win over Nikki Cross, so I guess the damage done before the matchup was not enough for Nikki Cross, so Sasha Banks does win over Nikki Cross, and that was pretty much that. So for our main event, it is Firefly Funhouse. The Firefly Funhouse returns as Bray Wyatt joins, and he says that he joined a book club. You know, he runs it down, talking about how he missed the kids and everything. Just such a beautiful man, man. Bray Wyatt's so talented. I've said it so many times before. Guy needs to go to Hollywood. He's just that good. He can be as popular as The Rock. That's how damn good he is, man. Dude is so freaking good at what he does. But during the middle of the Firefly Funhouse, Braun Strowman comes out, and he approaches the ring, and he pretty much cuts down Bray Wyatt, and he, he basically 
basically tells him, he says to him, he says, this story is over, you know, our rivalry is over, you've already had your shot, Bray, you're done, you are dead to me, this is it, I'm not giving you a championship opportunity, and Bray Wyatt comes back, so good, this man is so good, he says, he is re Bray says that he's re- Bray says that he's re- God in heaven. Bray says that he's re- Resurrecting, you jackass. God, I hate myself. I kept trying to say Bray Wyatt is resurrecting, and I said, Resurre- 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 like, shit. Just say it. Bray says that he is resurrecting the dead and chimes in the old Bray Wyatt, guys. So out of nowhere, kind of does like a little edit, and Bray Wyatt comes back on screen, and he is in the old getup, guys. He's got the hat. He's got the Hawaiian shirt. He's got the lamp. He looks like a badass, and he cuts down his tone. He goes back to his old Louisiana ways here. Down in the bayou, the swamp thing. Transforms into this old version of Bray Wyatt, cutting a sick-ass promo. He says, I created you, Braun, and it is my duty to destroy you. You know where to find me. Follow the buzzards. Run. And holy Christ, I got chills all over my damn body with this man cutting this promo. I was so invested in this and I'm actually looking forward to this Braun Strowman Bray Wyatt match simply off of this. I don't know if we're going to get the old Bray Wyatt. I don't know if we're going to get the Fiend. I don't know what we're going to get, but I'm invested, man. This guy's so damn good. And I told you the Fiend character to me is dead, but the Firefly Funhouse Bray is on fire and he's so good. He's the best character in WWE. Dude is so good. This promo gave me chills, and it was damn good, man. I, I, I was like, damn, bro. Woo! This was good-ish. This show started on fire. It ended on fire. I thought this was a very enjoyable SmackDown Live or Friday Night SmackDown on Fox, whatever the hell you want to call it. I was invested. It was good. Matt Riddle debuted. Had a great matchup between them. New Day and Lucha House Party put on a solid match. I enjoyed the Miz TV segment. Bray Wyatt had a great Firefly Funhouse. I don't know, man. Just really enjoyed enjoyable stuff. SmackDown was so much better than Raw this week, it wasn't even funny. I know that Monday Night Raw had a lot of stories built into it and stuff, but it was garbage to me. I could barely make it through that show. This SmackDown was super refreshing and awesome. So if you guys missed out on this Bray Wyatt promo, be sure to go back and watch it. Go back and watch Matt Riddle debut versus AJ Styles. Whoa, man. Talking about this Bray Wyatt shit gets me excited, man. That that literally, that's why I love professional wrestling right there. Great job to him. Great job to Sonya Deville. Bray Wyatt was the MVP of tonight. I put Matt Riddle and Sonya Deville right up there with him. But man, that was a solid little SmackDown football game. But that does it for my SmackDown review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of SmackDown down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.